A ball was growing on the side of my face. It started small, but now it grew so large that I couldn't eat. I could barely speak, and the skin was peeling off. I couldn't take it anymore. So that's when I decided to pop it with a needle. I never liked going to the dentist. Some stranger putting his hands in my mouth, the taste of those rubber gloves, the smell of all those chemicals, not to mention the feeling of the poking and prodding with all those metal instruments. Yuck. But for some reason, I always seem to have a cavity. You know, those tiny holes that are formed by unhealthy eating habits. And granted, I never liked brushing my teeth. So that definitely added to the possibility of having more holes than normal. But what I didn't realize was that having lots of little holes in my tooth could lead to something so drastic, like losing your life. That visit to the dentist, as he fixed my cavity in my left molar, he did something wrong. I don't know exactly what, but I knew for certain I was in pain. Maybe he cracked the tooth, or he didn't cover something correctly. The anesthesia wore off, but the pain stayed. At first, I thought that was just from the procedure, but a week later, instead of feeling better, I was feeling worse. My tooth hurt so much that I couldn't function. I just held my face and cried. Certain bacteria produce an acid that damages your tooth. Once the tooth is damaged, it's easier for the bacteria to spread, make more acid, and then do more damage. If the dentist had cracked my tooth, that would have made it even easier for the bacteria to reach the root of my tooth. However it happened, my tooth became badly infected. My mother took me back to the dentist and complained. But of course, the dentist said the infection could have come from other things in the week since the filling. My mom argued back, but that really didn't go anywhere. In the end, the dentist recommended another specialist, and we booked an appointment with her. At that appointment with a specialist, I was told I had a tooth abscess. You see, it may not seem like it, she said, but your teeth are a living part of your body. You only see the tip of the iceberg. The root of your tooth is embedded in your jaw. It has nerve endings and blood circulates there. When it's infected, it's incredibly painful. A tooth abscess is a pocket of pus that's caused by a bacterial infection. That pus is your own immune system trying to fight the infection. The specialist told my parents that I needed a root canal. But there was no way we could afford it, so she gave me a special type of toothpaste instead. Fast forward a few years, my little sister falls off her bike and cracks her tooth open. She immediately gets taken care of and gets her root canal. It got me to think that maybe my tooth wasn't as serious as hers. My pain had decreased over time, but never really went away. Some days, I woke up and it really hurt. And some days, I woke up and it didn't hurt at all. And because it was all so inconsistent, I never took it seriously, and my parents didn't see it was all from the same thing. I kind of got used to the pain. I couldn't remember what it felt like to not have this ache. But I soon learned that is never a good sign. During my junior year of high school, I noticed a small ball growing in my face by my left jaw. It was small and was only seen when I sucked my cheeks in. I figured it would go away, but instead, it grew and grew. It made me feel so insecure, and I really didn't enjoy going to school. The more I freaked out about it, the larger the ball grew. It got to the size of a ping pong ball, causing the skin around it to become flaky and peeled easily. I couldn't even eat without pushing the food to the right side of my face. What was even worse, the mass started leaking fluids. I got so embarrassed at school that I stopped talking in class and hid my face constantly. My mom thought it was a cyst and she kept trying to pop it with a needle. That actually helped, at first. Popping the abscess drained out the fluids, but it didn't stop the infection. It was spreading. I made an appointment with a family medicine doctor who confirmed that it was a tumor, a buildup of tissue formed by abnormal cells that could spread. We booked another appointment with him, and about two weeks later, I had surgery. I had to stay awake the whole time, but the doctor gave me local anesthesia. I was so afraid of what it might be, and I prayed the entire time. Luckily for me, the tumor was benign, which meant that after the surgery, I had to go back to school because if I missed a day, I would get behind on work. So I sat through classes with this big gauze on my face. 
My teachers asked me if I was okay, and I told them I was fine. But really, I was in pain, and more than anything else, I felt embarrassed. It felt like people stared at me all day. And even after the gauze and bandages weren't needed anymore, I still felt self-conscious about my scar. My self-esteem plummeted. One day, I made a mistake. It hardly ever snows in Georgia, but when it finally did, I was one of the first to go out and play. I slipped while playing with some friends and my stitches opened up. I had to go back and get restitched, but this time, the stitches started bleeding and pus came out of the wound. My doctor gave me endless antibiotics. Sure, they'd help for a few days or a week, but then the infection was back again. We even went to some other doctors for more opinions on why the infection wasn't going away, and one doctor even recommended a plastic surgeon. Can't hurt, right? So I decided to give it a try. By this time, I was a young adult and had a job with insurance, so I booked my own appointment and paid for it myself. My plastic surgeon removed some tissue and definitely helped with a scar that made me so self-conscious. But he said he didn't find anything that might be the cause of the infection. I suggested maybe my abscessed tooth had something to do with it, but he quickly brushed it off and that was that. I went back for steroid injections in my face every few weeks. But like with all the other doctors, I would be fine for several weeks and then the infection came back. I cried with frustration. I was bleeding and pus was coming out of my face all over again. I couldn't understand why this was all happening, why it kept happening, and why no one knew what was actually happening. Then one day, I was browsing Reddit. I found a comment on a thread where a woman said her nephew had grown a benign tumor from a tooth abscess. I screenshotted the comment and I showed my boyfriend. My boyfriend then told me a tragic story about how he used to work with a guy with all those symptoms. My boyfriend told me that it all started because his coworker didn't treat his abscessed tooth. The bacteria invaded the dental pulp. The innermost part of the tooth that contains blood vessels, nerves, and connective tissue, and then spread to his jaw, then his neck, and head. Exactly as the specialist explained to me all those years earlier. He didn't live because of sepsis. His coworker didn't freaking make it. That's when it really hit me. Of course, it wasn't coincidental that the infection was near my bad tooth. I found a dentist and booked a root canal right away. The root canal specialist said he'd never seen an infection this bad before. Within a week of my root canal, the infection was gone and my face could finally heal. Despite all the temporary pain and the permanent scar, I'm just glad it's all over with. Fast forward to today, I've done all the dentist recommended things. I've cut lots of sugar from my diet. I do miss soda, but I don't miss the pain so much sugar caused my teeth. I switch my toothbrush every three months and now I don't feel comfortable if I go to sleep without having brushed my teeth. I'm still afraid of dentists, even all these years later. But I'm more afraid of what might happen if I don't go to my yearly checkups.